Father, we're so thankful for you and another opportunity to come before your presence. We come this morning just to bless you and to praise you, simply to magnify and exalt you. For surely this is the day that you've made, and we rejoice, and we're glad in it. Father, we invite and invoke your presence. We simply say, come, Holy Spirit, speak to us and speak Mm -hmm. through us. Refresh, revive, renew, and resurrect, restore. Replenish, oh God. Thank you, Daddy. As we break open the dawn in your presence this morning, oh God. Father, let there be an unusual excitement, exhilaration, and expectation that is fulfilled Mm -hmm. by the indwelling presence of your person in this hour, oh God. We, We thank you for every voice, every intercessor. Thank that you, have Father. set themselves to task in this season, O oh God. Lord, God. We ask, Father, that you would uh, restore the virtue that's poured out uh, for your glory, O oh God. Hallelujah. That you would uh, undergird and strengthen, yes, replenish, you. that you would increase and multiply each of these, Father. Mm-hmm. Allow these voices to be established in the earth. For your glory, Father, for you said that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth, even as the waters cover the seas, O oh God. And, Father, let that word come to pass, even now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Yes, Every home that's represented yes, on this line, Father, let there be an unusual transitional transformation that would take place in every life, oh, Father. Let the true identity of kingdom sonship be established in these lives going forward, oh, God. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Let this be a day of great victory, great understanding, great insight, oh, Father. Great favor. Let favor fall upon these intercessors, even like a blanket, that they wear it like a garment. Mm. And into every atmosphere and every environment, oh God. Mm. That every environment that each of these enter, enter into be challenged to transform to look like you. To sound like you, oh God. Mm. Even the fragrance of the kingdom, let it penetrate and permeate and saturate the atmosphere, oh God. Mm. We thank you, Father, for those that will take a stand. For you said the righteous are as bold as a lion. Let the character, the nature, and the attributes of the lion of the tribe of Judah be released in the earth, Father, for your glory. And Mm. the sons of God would come forth. For you said all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let them come forth, that the earth be put back into its place of creative perfection. Even now, we thank you, Father. We thank you for this assignment, Father. And those that would stand in the gap as errands and errors and hold up this vessel that you've called to this place of assignment, O God, and not let this assignment fall to the wayside or become unfruitful. Let the fruit of the kingdom be always known and seen in this place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for his sake. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. You have displayed your splendor above the heavens. Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries. That you might silence the enemy and make the revengeful pain. When I see and consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have established. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of the earthborn man? 
that you have established? What is man that you are mindful of him? Hallelujah. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care, O oh God, for us? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have yes, put yes, all yes. things under his feet. Hallelujah. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the mm. birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, our Father. We bless your God, Father. We declare on this morning how majestic and glorious and excellent Excellent is your name in all the earth, O oh God. Father, we thank you that you've displayed your splendor and your beauty as the sun arises, O oh God, Father. We thank you that creation has to bow the womb to allow the expression of who you are to light up every single avenue, every single particle, every single atom, every single universal content of this earth, O oh God, Father, including man who you created, your son and your daughters, oh God, Father. God, we thank you that you said that you created us just a little lower than you, oh God, Father. God, and you said that you were crowned us, oh God, Father, with glory and honor, oh God. So, Father, we walk in you. We abide in you, oh God. Allow us, oh God, Father, to be a sweet expression of your glory, oh God, as we embrace our identity in you, oh God, Father, as, a, oh Father, your apostle just declared, oh God, Father. Father, we bind together and we join together with cords that cannot be broken, O oh Father, to stand in unity, O oh God, Father, in the unification of Holy Spirit and who you are, O oh God, Father, to allow your kingdom expression to be, O oh God, Father. Father, seen, O oh God, Father, and God, to prevail on this, O oh Father, synagogue of evil in which we live, O oh God. Father, I thank you right now, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit of light, your Holy Spirit of truth, your Holy Spirit of justice, your Holy Spirit of revenge, your Holy Spirit will establish, O oh God, Father, your name and all the earth, O oh God. Father, we pray, O oh God, Father, for our brothers and sisters, nationally and internationally, O oh God, Father. We come declaring, Father, that you our Lord God, and we bow, oh God, Father, to receive you, oh God, Father, as we submit and humble ourselves, oh God, Father, to declare, oh Father, with our tongues, oh God, Father, with our hands, oh God, with our eyes and our ears, oh God, how beautiful and majestic you are, oh God. We thank you, God, Father, for being the Lord and the chief, oh Father, cornerstone over our life, oh God. God, we thank you, God, that when everything seems like it's dying down in our life, I thank you, God, that you are the lily of the valley in our life, oh God, that you are the bright and you are the morning star, oh God. Father, as the word of God says, as your word says in Psalms 30, 3, 23, that you are our shepherd, which means, oh God, that you're going to feed and guide and you shield us, oh God. You're the, the defender before us, and you're the defender behind us, oh God. You said that we shall lack anything, oh God, Father. So God, we thank you for being our great provider, oh God, Father. When everything seems like it's withered out and dried out, oh God, I thank you, God, that you're the one that restores our soul, oh God, Father. We thank you, God, that you're the one that makes us to lie down in green pastures, which which means everything's going to be fresh and tender. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We thank you, God, Father, when we're thirsty and we're hungry for you. We thank you that we can drink from the well that will never run dry, oh God, because you lead us, oh God, Father, besides the path of restful waters, oh God, Father. We thank you, God, Father, that you refresh us and you restore us, oh God, Father. We thank you, God, that you're going to lead us in the path of righteousness, which means, God, that we're going to live upright. And we're going to walk in the right standing with you, God. Not for anything that we need or anything that we can earn, oh God, Father. But only for your name's sake will we do this, oh God, Father. For your name's sake, we bow the knees unto you. For your name's sake, we surrender our will, our mind, our heart, our virtue unto you, oh God, Father. And we embrace, oh God, everything that's unique, designed, purposely designed from you into our heart, our mind, and our spirit. 
in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. God, we thank you that even though we walk, oh Father, through the valley of the shadow of death, oh God, Father, we will fear and dread no evil, God. Father, we thank you, oh God, even though it may be deep and sunless, we thank you because you are the Father of light, the light that is up will permeate and radiate and disarm, oh Father, everything that's evil, everything that's dark, anything that's accursed, anything that's ancient in our life, oh God, Father, any single curses, oh God, I thank you, oh God, Father, that you, oh God, Father, that your light, oh God, Father, Will, O oh God, Father, disarm the enemy, O oh God, Father. Thank you, O oh God, Father, that you are the Lord who protects us and, and comforts us, God. We think that you're the staff, O oh God, that guides us in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Father, you said in your word that you will prepare the table before us, hallelujah, in the presence of all our enemies, O oh God. And you will anoint our head with oil, O oh God, Father. We thank you, O oh God, that from the bringing from the top, of our heads to the sole of our feet, oh God, Father, you will cover us up with your holy anointing. Blessed be the name of our Lord, our God. Father, we thank you that you said that surely your goodness and your mercy, your unfailing love shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we, oh God, Father, will live in your house forever, which means, oh God, that you will give us length of days, oh God, Father, that our dwelling place shall consistently be in you, oh God, Father, as we, our Father, invoke your presence, and we, O oh God, Father, stand, O oh God, Father, in your presence, O oh God. Father, allow our presence before you to be mixed with sweet perfume, with frankincense and more, O oh God, Father, and the lightful smell and a refreshing smell, invigorating sensation, O oh Father, unto you, O oh God. Father, we thank you that we are your sheep, we are your children, we are your sons and your daughters, O oh God, Father. And we thank you that, God, we will live to be a symbolism of who you are, O oh God, Father, as we, O oh God, Father, Allow, Father, every single thing about you to be activated in our lives, oh God, so that we can see, so that you can direct us, so that we can hear, oh God, Father, so that we can speak us out, oh God, only the things that come from you, oh God, Father. So God, we thank you, oh God, Father, for anointing our heads with your oil. But your fresh oil, but your fragrance, oh God, Father. God, we thank you that we won't be cold. We're not going to be lukewarm. We're going to be hot. Our temperature for you, our climate for you will always be hot, oh God, Father. Just like, oh God, Father, the Sahara Desert, oh God, Father. Just, oh God, Father, like in the islands, oh God, Father. It's never hot and it's never cold. It's always perfect, oh God, Father. And we will, oh God, Father, live to be, oh God, Father, that temperature in which you live, oh God. The synagogue in which you live, the temple in which you you live, oh Holy Father. God, we bless your holy name. We go run this course. We go run this course, oh God, with diligence, oh God, Father. We go run our race and we're not going to give up, oh God, Father. Father, we thank you that many will think that they're the last, but what a God says that the last will be first and the first will be last. So we will run this race with diligence. Mm. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yeah. Father, we engage and we invite your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over. Mm. Take over, Holy Spirit. As your yes. son comes up, as your daughter comes up to present your word, mm. let it be, O oh God, Father, fresh break away my bread from on high, O oh God, Father. Let her speak what you want her to speak. Allow her, O oh God, Father, to know and on this prayer line, she is free. Anyone that comes on this line, oh God, Father, on this morning glory prayer line, oh God, Father, allow them to know that there's a spread of freedom so that we can speak the truth and give your people words of knowledge, wisdom and encouragement and understanding so that they could never live a life like orphans or slaves ever again in the land of God. Good morning, beloved. I thank you, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will engage us freely on this line. It will direct us as we have holy fellowship with you today. As we have heavenly fellowship with you on this morning, O oh God. We thank you that you, in us, that you choose to make us your dwelling place. Hallelujah. So, Father, we bless your name. It is in a matchless Wonderful, hallelujah, victorious name, the name that's above every other name, the name that when demons hear it, they have to flee and tremble. 
The name that's above cancer and every disease. Hallelujah. The name that's over and above everything that's broken. The name that aligns, annihilates, and disarms anything accursed. The name Jesus, hallelujah. At the mention of that name, hallelujah, demons tremble. Oh, hallelujah, we thank you, God, for the name Jesus. We thank you for Jesus, oh, Lord. We bless you, oh, God. We think that this word goes out. And God, we will not be offended. But we will search our hearts, search our minds, search everything in, in us so that we can be much more acquainted, clean, oh Father, holy and acceptable, acceptable and delightful in your eyes, oh God. So as I relinquish my stand, I bless you, Jesus. I bless you, Holy Spirit. And I magnify you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you guys once again for meeting me and joining me on this line. Hallelujah. God is good. It doesn't matter what we're going through. The Lord is good. And his goodness is from everlasting to everlasting in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Know that your God will deliver you. Know that your God will do a turnaround for you, as the book of Psalms 129 says, that he will bring everything back to you. He will bring everything back to you. When the Lord brought us back from the captives of Zion, he brought Jerusalem back. They said, that their mouth was filled with laughter and their tongues were filled with shouting and rejoicing. So I'm saying right now to you, shout and rejoice because it doesn't matter what your life looks like. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Know that your God, hallelujah, is a strong deliverer and he will deliver you of everything that you've gone through in your life. So don't sit down and be pumped out in a corner or have the devil keep your mouth shut. You rise up and you sing with shout for joy. You make a joyful noise and make a shout with your tongue unto the God. You shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Triumph. Lift up your voice like a shouting shofar unto God and magnify his name and watch him deliver you. Amen? Amen. At this present time, Dr. Murphy, I'm going to relinquish the line to you. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. I am so blessed to be alive again, to share, and want to just go ahead and say thank you again for allowing God to uh, use this gift on your call, and I behoove that those that get a chance to listen to this would take some consideration to do some similar uh, moves of God. For those who have been on my calls, you know, I do pray but I believe that in this last day we have a lot of people who have a form of godliness and they are denying the power and they are not actually walking in that fruit, you know, of the spirit that God is requiring of us that we may be holy, you know, that we may be a royal priesthood and that we may be examples of what we say that we represent and that is his name. Amen. And so I really, really want to thank you for hearing God. I want to ask you again, of those that are maybe on the call that's listening for the first time, that um, I'm not 100, and I pray that you would self-examine yourself so that we can make sure that we kill vainglory, according to Philippians 2 and 3, so that we won't have the pride and think that we have arrived. I really, really believe that uh, we do have to die daily. That's and I really believe that uh, I don't care how much anointing you got on your life. I don't care how much Greek and Hebrew you can talk. That's right. Remember that the Bible is constantly reminding us, according to First Peter 1 and 15 and 16, that just as God who called you, that is us individually, holy. So we got to be holy in all we do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy, right? Yeah. And so... We have to be prepared for dying daily. And so I wanted to say that so that people won't think um, that because I'm not doing religiosity that I'm, I'm, you know, that I'm not.
fruitful. And I believe that the ministry has been fruitful for such a time as this because I do recognize my frailties. I do recognize when I need some counseling. I hope I'm talking to somebody on here today. I do recognize that I cannot be an island. I do recognize that I don't care if I'm an apostle. I do need to get some help sometime. And I believe that this is what this call, final call, is about, and that is for us to recognize uh, this process that God wants to take us through. And we talked about in the very beginning of this call, talking about the authenticity of, you know, being authentic and recognizing to take a good look inward so that we can see what's working on the inside so that the outward would, you know, people can see that peculiar person uh, of the spirit that lives inside of us. And so that's very, very important to me. And so what we're going to be going through some scriptures I'm going to give. We've had a wonderful time in prayer, beautiful prayer, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is resting and moving. I believe that he's big, and I believe that he is very pleased with the call. And so I thank him this morning for his glory. I thank him that all seven ministry spirits, I decree and I declare they rest upon me mightily. And I decree that we will all have quick understanding in the spirit of the Lord, and that our eyes and our ears will be enlightened. And so I thank you for it, Daddy. Be thou glorified in Jesus' name. And so I'm going to give you these scriptures, and you can look at those in your time. And then I'm going to jump into um, a couple of the scriptures that we're going to jump start with. And so got your pen. You can go ahead and write these down. Second Peter 1, uh, verse 10, 11. And uh, these are just some focal scriptures, so, you know, you want to take some time to look at Philippians 1 and 6. I pretty much gave you already uh, Philippians 2 and 3, talking about vain glory. It's very important this call uh, today on this last call that we have here. And if you choose to go back and look at the others, listen to the others, you can go back there already on my YouTube channel. You can just type sessions, the number two, real, and you can hear the other two. But I gave you Philippians 1 and 6. Uh, Romans 8, 29, and 30, um, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, uh, James 1, verse 2 through 5, uh, Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 11, and 1 Peter 2 and 2. So today we're talking about you know, making sure we recognize and make sure we pay attention to some of the things that many people have done in times past. And I definitely can attest to that. I told some of the story of me trying to go around acting like I'm being a hand of somebody or running around and trying to imitate, trying to uh, act like I'm packing some power that had not been processed or had not been matured. And so the devil really worked really overtime not only in my physical body, but with me emotionally. Uh, it worked on me in the uh, realm of not being sure of my call and my election on my life for that particular season in my life. And so I think it's important that we look at some of these marks, or uh, better yet, the character. I talked about that in the email that I sent talking about the character, you know, that's one of the things that's very important because your character is his name that lives inside of you. And so I wanted to share the first scripture coming from Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30, that says, for whom he did foreknow, very important, he did also predestinate, I'm reading in the King James Version, to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. However, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Very important. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And then Second Corinthians 3.18, King James says, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. This is the part that we got to remember, from glory to glory, mm. even as the Spirit of the Lord. 
you know, as I began to meditate on that scripture, and again, I said I'm not 100, and I'm not on here to try to debate or hear uh, messages about, you know, where I am in these messages. However, I want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning us growing from glory to glory. Amen. It's been very important to me because many of us have gotten out of position. And so this process, you know, maturity is so important because many of us are going ahead of God. And when we go ahead of God, this is the reason why we can't get what we need to get. There are some processes, there are some, uh, how they say, glory, glory, uh, things that we need to be in the fire about and feel because many of us, uh, as I said, we can become very, very, um, how they say, honorary, where we don't want to obey God, where we be stubborn, and we want to do it our way and be in our own time. But we've got to remember, Abba is speaking when he is calling, and we have to be very, very sensitive to his voice. And so these particular divine processes, they're going to get a fulfillment if we make sure that we don't be looking for vain glory. They're going to get a fulfillment in every call that we have and every assignment that God has given us, that's been released to us to do, he has to be glorified. And so if we don't have the ability to recognize the difference between the process and the election, then we're going to get out of position and we're going to be out of our season and time. And so there are hindrances to every believer when we look in uh, the spirit of being vain, when we're looking at the spirit of being how they say, equal as, and having the spirit of the equalizer. I talked about a lot of those last week about how we can become so jealous, so uh, envious of someone else's gift to we'll sometimes find ourselves doing things that we don't need to do or saying we hear God about something that God is not speaking. We say these things because it makes us feel superstitious that people will pay attention to us. I literally watch people and say, hold up, hold a minute. Oh, yeah, God is saying this. You know, and people don't have any fear, any reverence of using what God is saying. God is saying. That's very, very serious. This is the reason why people that are carnal in the world or that's trying to get to God don't want to hear God because we have propelized so much. We have tried to be so super spiritual. They don't want to hear anything from God today because of the false prophecy because of this vainglory type of minister. And so as we look at this journey, as we look at this process, we need to make sure that this process, when we begin to think, how, am God, how is God going to use me? Well, the question is, do you want to be used? Many of us are not being used because we still are in vainglory. We still are what I, I call needing to go through some emotional exercise or some emotional therapy because we don't have those things dealt with. Many of us are still angry. I talked about that last week. But this journey and this process, this is the key that God wants to process in our lives. He wants to make sure that you have that fruit, that you have those seeds in the ground where you have been grounded, where you have been rooted. And if we think about the process, a process is defined as a series of actions, a series of steps, a series of things that we have went through. That's what the grace is. Remember we talked about the grace, the inward and the outward? So when we have been graced, that means now God is going to desire for us to be able to have a good ending in the process. I don't want to preach. And so he accomplishes through uh, this process, through this journey. And as we begin to think on this process and this journey, many of us are trying to go on the journey, and you ain't even went in the process. You cannot continue on with someone and have the expected end to be good when God is trying to process. See, in every stage of our calling, and remember we talked about in the very beginning of our lessons, that we're going to have a mini call. Many of us are called to go feed the hungry, and we all should have that. We all should be our ultimate call, according to Matthew 28, and that is to create disciples. And so when we don't process any of these divine callings so that these fights and these falls and these bumps and these bruises and these things that we keep getting hit, I call them needless casualties about, then God can't mature us because we don't want to process these bumps. We don't want to process these breaches. And many on the call may be going through breaches right now. Some of you don't even speak to your mama. Some of you don't even speak to your daddy. Some of you, some of you got breaches with your own children. 
but yet you won't try to process it. You know, but yet you want to try to lay hands on somebody else and talk to them about God is saying, and then you cast that out of you. God, help me today. I'm not going to go to bed with you. I'm not going to uh, let you sleep with me. I'm not going to have that. I tell my daughter that every day. Are you going to go to bed with them tonight? You going to go to bed with them tonight? Now, why do you want to sleep with them, with that mess on your mind? So we've got to look at where am I, where is my virtue being drained at? Everything in life is going to have to work through that power of the process. I know a woman that's on this call right now that's had a baby. I know you didn't start beating your stomach and say, come out, come out now, because this is just getting too much weight on me. Oh, already in the second month, it's just too much throwing up. You know, come out. Sit down, Lord, help me. No, you didn't do that. You know you had to go through the process if you wanted this baby to be full grown. Lord, help me now. And so this word journey is defined as a distance. You're traveling. You're on this kingdom journey. And so when you're going through this process, God is working out things. He's taking things out of us, the things that so easily beset us, that seem to write, us, write to us, right? Those things in our minds are that we feel like we have injustice. So we want to do it our way. We want to go our way. You know, and so this is the reason why all the oil that you think that God has inside of you is just leaking out. It is not going to be smeared on nobody, not in the right way, because you don't want to go through the journey in the process. God help me. In every process, we've got to make sure that we know that God has really, really spoken to us. So let's talk about what is spiritual maturity then, Dr. Murphy. Maturity is defined as the state of being mature, that means right, right. I hate getting grapes and they don't taste right. I know I'm talking to somebody. I hate biting into an apple and it don't taste right. It don't taste right. So that means you have been developed. You are going through the process from glory to glory. You're being perfected. That's what that means. And so we need to make sure that you don't be rejected. You want to be perfected. And so when you're rejected, that means daddy is saying, I'm going to spew you out because, you, you know, you, you look warm here. You want to play, play. You want to get out there and act like because you're packing your Bible, that everybody's supposed to draw to you because you look so spiritual. But one of the understandings that Daddy wants us to do is that we need to be able to hunger and thirst for more and more of him. You know, and this is one of the things that is very important for us to become mature because a lot of us don't understand, as the Bible is constantly reminding us over and over again. What scriptures that I can't even remember in the Bible? Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 2 that says in such, verse 4, and such trust have we through Christ to God inward, to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And verse 6 is the key here. Who also hath made us able ministers, of the New Testament, not of the letter, Greek and Hebrew speakers, teachers, uh, and we need that word. We've got to have the word. That's going to give the light and the life. But we also need to remember, but the spirit, yes, but of the spirit, for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And many of our spirits have been crushed, many of our spirits have been wounded, many of our spirits are still hurting right now, and so we cannot increase, we cannot grow up because of, you know, the lack of maturity. And so the scripture tells us that many of the people in times past have went ahead of God, and so you saw what happened to many of them in scripture, that they went ahead And they didn't do very well, now did they? And so as we go on to think about some fruit and some marks that God wants us to really, really recognize in this, I want to start by making sure we understand the conformity, meaning that you need to conform into his likeness, meaning that we need to do an emotional checkup, you know, starting from the chest up to make sure our heart is in the right position, that we really love God for real. And if we love God, 
for real, then we will forgive our brethren who trespass against us. We will Lord. obey the commandments to love. We will forgive. We will have the most important fruit is love. And I believe that God uh, has gifted me with one of the fruits that I think that is necessary in this last day, and that is to be long-suffering. So you mix them two together, you're going to be powerful. And that's love and long-suffering. And I believe that if you love, you've got to be long-suffering. Yes, Lord. And so I think that as we go on and look at these marks, I want to talk about the first mark is to make sure that you be mature to make sure that you have a commitment. I've in my life seen so many people who say that they're coming to a ministry or uh, you know, get connected to a ministry, and they don't commit. There should be a sign of commitment. Now, uh, part of this commitment means that you no longer want to be the way you were, and you're there making a decision that you want that seasoned individual or that church who is truly blood bought and love God, that leader, that you're there now. You've made a decision that you love God enough to obey him, set under this leader who you believe that God has called you to do, a, uh, has called you a work, and you're there to do that work with that leader. You know, most of the times we don't persevere because we're so hurt. But you've got to remember that the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, stand firm. Let nothing move you. I'm reading the NIV. Always give yourself fully to the word of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not going to be in vain. But many of us get upset because they're not putting you in a position. They're not allowing you to preach. They're not doing certain things. And many of us do need to sit down somewhere. I never forget the pastor told me to sit down. You know, you just steady going here and steady going there, you know, because they call your name. We need to make sure that we don't go through every door because every door is not God's door. And then the second yeah. of, of maturity yeah. is we, uh, uh, this person is so shaken by flattery, you know, or they get so shaken by criticism. You remember Joseph? But well, why is it that we cannot overlook some of these things? You know, why is it that we have to go to bed with them? You know, why is it that we have to take those criticisms and allow the enemy to work those things to the point that we can't rest or that we cannot really have the fullness of his glory in our lives because see, we're so worried about what they said, what they did. You know, we know that it hurt. We know it disgusted us. But we've got to recognize that you're going to be mature when you don't allow flattery to move you. Well, you don't listen to tickling ear messages from people that say, oh, you preach that. Oh, you anointed. Well, I believe that if God be in you, I say, if God be in you, we already know that if God be for you and he be in you, then everything is already all right. But many of us are waiting to hear, well, yeah, they, they didn't say nothing about the word I preached. They didn't say nothing about what I did, you know. But you've got to understand there's a difference in receiving a compliment and versus the criticism. So we need to let this particular part of our lives rest in making sure that God get glory so that we won't be vain glory operating, so we won't be distorted in our own selfish views, and we won't get twisted and go to bed with criticism because we're looking for something different. And then the third part of this, Mark, is that we need to make sure that a mature truth person understands that the purposes uh, or processes uh, the true humility of a person is going to come out of that fruit of the love. It's going to come out of that fruit of humility. You've got to have a spirit of humility. That's one of the greatest things that people are lacking today when they say, I have a gift, I have a calling, but yet you don't have humility. You know, you lack that. You don't want to be still and let God speak through that person or through the pastor or the leader so that you won't think that you're somebody that you're not. I just read that. You can't be it. You've got to wait. Mature people uh, won't be so consumed or draw attention to themselves. you got to make sure that you won't be smelling yourself, as the old folks say. Mm. You know, some of us are getting confused even with a gift versus a talent. There is a difference. I've said it over and over again. There is a difference in a talent versus uh, an election call on your life. And so many of us are talented at cooking. Does the Bible say that that's a gift? No, it's not. And so we need to make sure that we're secure in our identity. We're secure in our election. 
in our call. And then the fourth mark of this thing is a mature person's decisions are based on character and not their feelings. And many of us, uh, we're basing our feelings versus our character, and uh, that's why we get in mixed up. Uh-huh. The Bible tells us in Philippians uh, 2 and 3, I just told you. You know, we need to think on that. Make sure that we don't have this, this selfish, this kind of vain personality, that we don't have these ambitions that make us feel like that this is, I, uh, this is what I, say, I am a humble leader. You know, and that we're better than anybody else. Hmm. That we walk in this thing better than anybody else. We're more right. anointed than anybody else. Right. You know, you can't you can't move and flow in maturity that way. He's given us gifts. He's given us talents. You know, and the Spirit of the Lord is going to give the increase. It's only going to be Holy Spirit. Many of us are walking around, you know, trying to possess the power and, and let the process. We need to know that we need Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Holy Spirit is life, and Holy Spirit is power. Let's sit to the moon. And so number four, we need to make sure that we have the marks of maturity in this process mm-hmm. and to make sure that when we make these decisions, I'm sorry, number five, where I'm at right now, right? right? Mm-hmm. I'm at number five. I'm at number five. Yes. Right, okay. This process means that this person uh, has a spirit of gratitude. That's very important. I've never seen so many ungrateful and grumbling leaders. Grumbling every time your feet hit the floor. I had to realize that some people have caused us to be attached to their emotions. Some stuff you're going to have to tell them, I'm going to call you back. Mm-hmm. And that, now when you call them back, you've got to make sure they understand it. That they, I don't want to talk about that no more, and I don't want to hear that no more, because that's, that got in my spirit. That made me entertain your hell. Mm-hmm. What we do, we give our ear to the thing. And then we wonder why we're growing, we're complaining. You know, you got them in your car, they, you go into Walmart, and they want to go to Galleria, trying to tell you where to go, growing and complaining. We need to understand that a mature person, you know, they know how to express their gratitude. They know how to share. They know how to say who they are, what they have been blessed by, and they're not prideful. See, Thank in this God. part, of saying I'm wrong in this part of saying I appreciate you. That's Those right. are hard words to say, you know, when someone is not humble. But we not we need to have consistency with gratitude. See what the Bible tells in the Colossians two, verses six and seven. It says, "Just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith." As you were taught, guess what? And then overflowing with thankfulness. Hmm. You need to be thankful. Yes, you Lord. know, you need to flow that. And so I behoove you this week. That's what I'm doing all this week. I've been asking God to uh, let me get myself back into the mode of saying I thank you and don't grumble. So I'm making sure that I'm constantly saying thank you. And so when I hear the calls, I get the call of grumbling and complaining, I call you back. My sister tried it yesterday. She kept going on and going on. I said, i got to call you back. She said, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't want to hear that. I just can't hear that. I don't want you to hear that. Call me back when you don't want to talk, when you talk about something else. You know, I don't want you to hear this grumbling and complaining. I said, you need to work on it yourself. See, I can talk that way to my sister. But when you're talking to another leader, they're going to take it offensive. But you need to make sure they understand that if they're mature, then they want to make sure that they're rooted and grounded and thanksgiving, not grumbling and complaining. This is what's holding us up a lot. Many of us, if we think about mature people, they are in the spirit of thanksgiving and not intention. How to say, uh, oh, what's the word I want to use? They're not in um, entitlement mode. They believe that this is, I'm entitled. We know our kids are that way. But, you know, you're not entitled to always have this vain glory blowing out of your ear with someone constantly saying, thank you, you bless me, thank you, you bless me. We know ain't nothing wrong with honor, honors do. But for you to go on and on thinking this, and number six, you know, a mature person knows how to prioritize. You know, they make sure that others know who they are. They understand to make sure that, I'm not going to do and go and be everywhere. A mature person is one whose agenda revolves around other people and not just they self. 
you know, I'm not trying to do everything for me. I'm trying to make sure I bring Daddy glory, and I'm not trying to uh, prioritize myself just to be able to do just what you want me to do when I know Daddy's asking me to do a thing. In humility, you need to make sure that you be on God's agenda and not yours and everybody else's. And then the seventh thing for maturity is a person needs to seek wisdom. This is so important. You know, many of us don't want to be teachable. This is why we can't grow. The hardest thing I've had to endure uh, with my school of ministry, <coughs> excuse me, is dealing with leaders who are not teachable. But yet they, when they get ready to enroll, oh, I just want to get whatever God wants. You just leave me, show me. You know, I just won't get what God wants. But when you start to show them that they're not teachable, they become offended. And you know you're not a teachable just by saying it if you're irritated. I don't want to preach. Just by saying that you're not teachable and you get irritated. That says something right there. Mm. You can't presume that you have all the answers. None of us do. I just said that. That's right. And you can't be ashamed to seek counsel. On the wise seek counsel. There's safety in a multitude of counselors. And so this journey, you know, there's stages, there's processes for us to produce this maturity. And so we need to make sure that we look at some ways to stay strong. And I'm going to stop so that you all can decide if you've got any questions. I'll throw it back to her. But we need to meditate on the word. We need to confess our faults, not just to God, but in God's time, and confess our faults to one another, that God can hear your prayers. Many of your prayers are blocked, and you wonder why God is not answering you. Mm. You don't want to read, you don't want to meditate, and you need to confess the word daily over your life. You need to repent. Lord, help me today. Repent. Lord, I'm going to say it again. Repent. The word of God will fill you up. The word of God will heal you. The word of God will feed you. The word of God will mature you and grow you. You've got to remain lowly, mean a spiritual baby, so you can get the food you need through the Word of God daily. The Bible tells us in First Peter 2 and 2 that a newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. So the Word, the word of God is to your spirit what food is to your body. You cannot grow and mature and meet the demands of the call and election on your life unless you feed your, word, feed your spirit through the Word of God. So we need to spend time uh, in prayer. Many of you don't spend no time in prayer, but yet you're expecting God to move supernaturally yes. in you. Yes. You don't want to pray. You know, many of us won't spend 30 minutes, but you've got your cell phone in there trying to see who texts you. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Yes. But you can sit in there on the phone, I don't know how long, but you won't give Daddy even 15 minutes. So all week long this week, that's what I'm doing. I'm fasting, I'm grumbling, I'm praying. So you need to strive and thrive to break the flesh, the thing that's so easy to set us. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Spend more time doing that. And then the third thing I think you need to think about, you need to have spiritually sound people around you. Many people, according to Proverbs 27 17, many people spend more time with people who, that are not sharpening them, but people who are tickling their ear giving them a prophetic word, giving them something to say that they're they super spiritual. You cannot spend most of your time with these people who do not have their anointing on their life. Many of us call ourselves free agents, free spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of hearing all these different this, this definitions of things that we have decided we want to be. Oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, oh, I'm a pastor. I don't, go to, I don't have to go to church. I, 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 I set up church. The devil is a lie. I'm a bishop. I, I don't need that there. I, I create leaders. The devil is a lie. No, no, no. We, we ain't no free spirit. No, no, no. A free spirit means you're independent. That means you become independent. That means you don't even need Jesus. Lord, help me today. Free agents. That means you ain't connected to nobody. Um, I ain't heard that one before. I'm a free agent. Lord, help God. I want to holler. That means you ain't connected to nobody, no thing. You're just doing your thing, the thing that you think is valuable to you, what you think. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 27, 17. And so people that spend their time with people that can influence them in the spirit, that can spiritually vibrate them and get them to move and, and, and have this. Uh, Sunday, and have this spirit of, you know, this excitement of who they are in the spirit. You need somebody who has wisdom, who know, who's been there, done that. 
not someone that because they're so intellectual that you can thrive and go and say these uh, Greek and these Hebrews, Lord, help me today. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. No, it's, trust me, you need to understand the Greek and the Hebrew and the Jewish calendar and everything else. You do need to understand these things. But what you do need, do need to understand, you need to have somebody sound in their mind. That's someone right. that loves God. Someone that stands close to God. Someone who can admit when they're wrong. Someone who can repent even to you. That's I don't care if they're apostle, bishop, whoever. That's and say, I messed up. Psalms 92 and 13 says, for those who are planted. That's I'm right. going to minute here. Man. You're going to flourish if you get planted somewhere. Hebrews 10 and 25 tells us we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves with believers. You know, not Amen. with people who just because, oh, they, they connected to uh, this influence in your person. So I'm going to stay connected to them because I'm sure if I stay connected to them, they might get me to T.D. Jakes. They might get me to this person, that person. Hey, the people got the wrong motives, <laughs> you know, on, they connected that. to the wrong thing oh, because it mm-hmm. sounds good, because okay. it looks big, that hey. you need to be there. I've seen churches that's got 10 people and more powerful than the ones that got thousands. Yeah. Lord, that's that's right. God. Woo. God. I don't want to speak it. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Lord, Why? Because they've made a decision to be grounded. they made a decision to do an Acts 2 movement. Lord, help me today. Mm. And they are mm. committed. There's no commitment today. There's no loyalty today. There's no honor. And you expect to mature and grow and flow? We need to spend time in prayer daily in the tongues. This is one that people do. I drive in tongues. As soon as I get in my car, I break out of tongues. Why? Because hell is raging. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to make sure that we look at Acts 2 and 4. It says that then when they came together, something happened. Yes. You remember, they were in agreement. Tongues became the flow. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 4 tells that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies what? Himself. But yeah. he prophesied, he that prophesied, edifies the church. And so we need to make sure that we try to build ourselves up as we drive in these tongues, that we practice these tongues. God will refresh your tongue. Some of you are speaking the same tongue over and over again. Na 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 hallelujah. Na 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 tika, hallelujah. But you're not matured. God help me today. Oh, my God, help me. Tell somebody is mature. I was listening to you and praying last week, uh, Prophetess, and I said, oh, my God, she done shifted to a whole new uh, level of tongues. That, 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 that shows that you have been in the presence of our daddy, and he started to baptize you with a fresh awe. It was Sunday. Oh, yes, tongues yes. of God, tongues of worship. It was Sunday. Don't want to pray. And so you got to read the book. you got to get around these sounds. People and you got to make sure that you get some books and some some audios. I tell you, I got a library that just won't wait. I told my kids, my, my kids said, "Mom, you can make a library." That's because I get people who I know that are anointed, have been broken, that are that, that, that ain't prideful, that's willing to tell the truth in their books. The people that read my books, they already know I'm gonna keep it real, real, real. Mm-hmm. Because now that I'm delivering, I can. Many of you are writing things you never, ever left. You, many of you are doing things that you never, ever left. We need to make sure that it is dead. Lord, help me today so it won't come back and make, make yes, God a shame, you know, of these things that you saying you're doing. So we need to read spiritually sound authors, listen to spiritually sound uh, messages, and trust the men and women of God. And the Bible is a great one to start with. And then finally, I love the way my, my uh, anointed leader that I follow says, uh, doctor, I call him my solo drink. He said, don't be a river. He said, be a river, don't be a swamp. Mm. Uh, many of us, according mm. to John 7, 38, he says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall, not will possibly be, he said, it shall flow rivers of living water. We've got to remember a, a swamp collects and retains water that yeah. comes its way. That's right. Oh. Don't be the kind of person who seeks to accumulate all these different things in different ways, and you're not solid and stable in nothing. Mm. As believers, we are to be a blessing. We're supposed to flow through the Holy Spirit onto others. We're supposed to smear the oil that he's given us onto others. But when we hard the blessing, when we keep the thing that God has given us to do because you don't know who you are, 
you can't figure out who God has called you to be in this chosen generation population, then we become detached or we'll start to attach spiritually to stagnated people, people who are really not ready emotionally, people who are prideful. We start to detach from those who are sound. And God is trying to get us to recognize that we are a body. You cannot cut my arm off. You cannot stop talking to me. You cannot hmm. ignore me. If you really say you are a believer, and I know I am, I don't want to preach. Mm, come on. Come on. I am. Bring it. Why are you not talking to me? Why are you not trying to sharpen me? Why are you not trying to get with me? And then my life seems so many. I say, oh, it's my season. It's not there anymore. That's mm. silly. <laughs> oh, that's silly. <laughs> but we say we're a body. That's why we can't be an Acts 2 movement this last day. Hey. Because we want to run to intellectualism. We want to run to the big crowds. And the river is not flowing where it needs to. Yokes are not being destroyed and lives are not being changed and transformed. The freshness, the renewing is in the flow of your character. Renewing is in the flow of who God says you is and not who you say you are. So we've got to stay vitally connected to the right vine. We've got to make sure that we be in the season of refreshing, the season of healing and delivering power. Demonstration mm. power, not just talking power, but mm. demonstration power. I'm oh. stopping right there, right there, right there. Mm. Mm. I'm stopping right there, right there. I'm stopping. You sure? Because we can go on. I'm out of work today, so you can go on. Well, I'm stopping because I think that, you know, people have been taught they need to go back and listen to those messages. I think it's important that they need to uh, take a minute and look at where am I? Do I have mm -hmm. a river or do I have a swamp ministry? You know, I really, really think that many of us have been attached to too many things. Many of us uh, ministries have been devoured and our babies uh, spiritually are dying in our spiritual room because we're trying to create a move ahead of God. We're not going through the process. So, you know, many of us are just cannot recognize the power that's inside of us because we're too busy looking at the potential that we might be able to get with somebody who can get us to the point A to point B. And you ain't even finished just the simple who am I? Lord, help me. Come on, come on, woman of God. Come on. Tell it. Who am I? Mm. Who am I? And I thank God that He sent me through those challenges to make sure yes, I really understood uh, my election. You know, it took me a while to recognize that even, you know, we, we need to repent. You know, like I said, many of us leaders are ordained and licensed people who ain't there yet. I had to go back and repent, ordained and licensed people who were not there yet. Yes, I had the Lord, that Lord to grace me, Amen. you know, to, yes. to be an opportunity to go back and tell them, okay, I messed up. You know, you, you're not there yet. Uh, I saw something that didn't even equal that. You know, many of us getting the, the, the administration gifts and, and, and the election uh, five-fold gifts twisted. We need to make sure that we go back and look at the scripture very clearly. Now, I'm not teaching that today. You can go online, check that lesson out on those uh, spiritual gifts, administrative gifts versus uh, the administration gifts versus the five-fold gift. We need to make sure we, we be there so we won't go ahead of God, you know, so we mm -hmm. won't uh, be licensing people to go out and hurt other people because they're not yeah. even there. Many of them don't know what a pastor is. Many of them don't know what an apostle is. And many of them are calling themselves bishops. And I tell you, they're beating their wives and everything else. I don't understand this thing. Hey. You know, it's uh -huh. about a name. Uh -huh. It's about a title. You know, it's always about what is the, the kids call it, what is the ethic word today? What is the ethic move today? And ethic ain't got nothing to do with the move of spirit. It is going to be Come Holy on. Spirit all day long, and we're going to have to have Holy Spirit to be able to do what God wants us to do. That's if you're not baptized That's in Holy right. Spirit, you've been That's baptized right. in water, and you are a leader, you need to be seeking God about being filled with Holy Spirit with the evidence that it was Sunday oh. of speaking in tongues. Does yeah. it make you anointed? Does it make you anointed or appointed? No, 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 it does not, because many people are speaking in tongues that are not of God. Hello? I think at this time, right. we need to make sure that we get on our face and pray that God will help us that's the, that, to see what is inside of me that I may be a fraud of his spirit. I'm stopping. Oh, I like that. Woo! Jesus. Glory. Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Mm. Got to meditate on that for a second. Jesus, Lord. Lord, uh, help me today. Lord, help me. Mm. I'm not going to play play no more. You know, no I play, play played a lot. Don't you know. Play. Mm -mm. I can't do it. 
I depend on him every day for everything. Many of us say we're in full-time ministry, and, you know, many of us are trying to, trying to take your car note to pay the church note. I'm not playing playing no more. We're in an hour right now to, to tell people, quit getting the storefront. Start in your house. I'm so tired come of people on, trying to get a two or three little people that they have ejected from somebody else's church. Lord, help me today. Come on. That you have, that you have made a little church from somebody else's church. Hmm. And I, my thing is, I'm, I'm here with this. You hear me? It ain't going to grow because you was not humble and you didn't go through the process. Yeah. You, know, uh-huh. you, 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 you you just trying to run around like a vagabond and don't want to get to connect to nobody because you still hurt. You think somebody kind of con- trying to control, control you. Yeah. It ain't going to grow. Come you hear me? And you can't go. She cut it off. You got to go through the process. You got to go through the process. You got to value Holy Spirit. You got to help me. God, help me today. Mm. You know, we need, we need the Holy Spirit going to take us from glory to glory. That means you are individual, individualized. Remember when I told you last week about the inward and the outward? We got to yeah. also remember that God's grace is given to us individually. He knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what's in you. He knows exactly your timing. He knows exactly what he needs to meet uh-huh. through you. He knows exactly what measure. That's what this scripture talks about, Ephesians 4 and 6. He knows and sees what's fit for you right now, what he got to process out of you so yes. that you Thank can you, be a glory vessel. You hear me? Yes. yes. So the spiritual yes. gift involves a variety of abilities. That means... Get all of our gifts to work together yes. you know, to the glory of God. But we need to make sure that our abilities, our competencies are there. Yes. Oh, yeah. hey. You know, Dr. Murphy, I, I, can, uh, I am so blessed that you said that because my brother, Brandon, is on the, on the line. And every time Brandon and I and Apostle George get together, and I can just have a thought, or he can just have a thought, or Apostle George can just have a thought, and we bring, and I and I would call Brandon and say, "Hey, B, uh, bro, um, this is what I'm hearing in the spirit. I mean, I, I mean, this let 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 let's link up, let's digest this. And when we all get together, all three gifts together, Apostle, I promise you, it's like God reveals more, and He opens up like a whole portal of, of knowledge and understanding. He just keeps downloading onto us. And for the whole day, we be texting, okay, what about, you know, this is what I heard. And, and it's like, it's amazing. Brandon, can you speak? Are you available to speak, Brandon? Because I hope I'm explaining this correctly, you know? And it's just amazing. And you right. you know, when we all get together, that's why he said he brought five folds for a reason, you know? Right. It is amazing because the power of God is even stronger when we all connect. And I'm like, what? And then he will have another insight, and then Apostle George will have an insight, and then, oh, my God, it's just downloading and down. And then sometimes I call Evangelist Shower West, you know, and I'm like, oh, or sometimes I call you, Doc, you know, and it's amazing, you know, what happens when we, when we come together as one body, how God would just reveal things and open up things because that is his design. It's always been his design. Amen? Yes, and everybody's not in the same vein. You know, everybody, you know, it's individualized. That's why it's called glory to glory. Wherever you've been in the fire, you're supposed to be helping me. I'm supposed to be being to call you and consult correct. with you. That's why I have counselors all over the state, different ones I can call. Oh, yeah, she real anointed in this. Let me call them. You know, I, I, you know I can't just say that you're not anointed. You're just not on that area of the level yet. You right. haven't went through that yet. You can, I can't talk to you about this. I've got to hear it from someone that's keen in the spirit concerning this matter. Because mm-hmm. what I may think is right, they'll say, oh, no, 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 Dr. Murphy, no. They, they're going to tell me, and I said, but, no, ain't no but, Dr. Murphy, that's it. Because they've been there, and they say, no, you stay right there, and you do this right now, you didn't do it right now, and don't you do this or that. I will receive that because I know that these people have been in the fire. You better hear me. Yes. And so I need to process yes. with Daddy to see what Daddy wants me to do concerning my journey and my process of this that thing. That's correct. They told me. I didn't take mm-hmm. them to the altar, right? Take them to the altar with this, what this mentor has told me. And based mm-hmm. on what now, I got to see what Daddy is saying about what they told me. Yes, amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Oh, I amen. love it. Mm. It's awesome. Does anyone have a comment or a question? We open up for um, Q&A right now. So if you have any comments, any questions... 
So anything you would like to contribute to what you just heard, bring it on because iron sharpens iron. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning, uh, people of God. Uh, good word, good Dr. Murphy. A lot of uh, out here, a lot of um, restore, a lot of uh, uplifting, and a lot of correction, a lot of rebuking. Yes. And that's what God does. He, yes. he wants that to come forth in us because that's what's going to help us to grow. And I like the part when you said about, um, you know, we can't just go here, there, and everywhere. And uh, we have to... Um, allow God to, to, to tell us where to go, when to go, and, um, and we can't do everything and, because we've got to have a balance. Right. And it's okay. It is okay. Because right. uh, I remember at the beginning of um, my conversion, I wanted to go here. I wanted to go there. I wanted to go. And then all of a sudden, sometimes when I want, I wasn't treated the way, like you said, um, it, 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 there were some things that, because of me wanting to, to, to go, and my heart was okay, my heart was right, but sometimes the people weren't right. Right. And, and then, then, too, God says, it wasn't my timing. It, it, wasn't, yeah, it just wasn't my timing. Yeah. Right. So they had to learn how to just be still and um, just allow God to... to to guide and, and even when asking different ones to, to come and whenever they say no and, and, and we have to we have to um understand that if God speaks to an individual at that time and, and he tells them no, that it's okay with us. That right. we have to realize that whatever God told them whether and sometimes the enemy will say, "Well, there's something wrong with you." No, there may not be nothing wrong with you, but the enemy may, will come and try to make you think that something's wrong with you. Right. But what you have to do is just. A lot of times, people say, "Stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. Just let let the Lord guide yeah. and, and direct you." Mm-hmm. And I remember there was a woman of God that. We couldn't service her, and she had given us several dates. But what she failed to realize was her ministry is important, but the ministry that God, and, and like you said, people got to understand that the ministry that God gives to others is just as important as someone else's ministry. Right, and exactly. And if they right. come to help you, uh, it's okay. And instead of us um, not reaching out to them whenever they need help instead of always wanting their help. What about helping them whenever they need help? That is correct. And that, that is that's correct. That's kingdom building. We have to go to one another that's instead right. of uh, always giving somewhere and then don't nobody want to give, give to you. That's, right. that's, that's, not, the, that's right. not the way it works. That's we right. have to, like you said about the arm. The, the arm and the leg and the feet and the and the toes and we're all connected together and we should be able to help one another. Amen. And yes. uh, it's the same thing. Awesome word, just awesome. Amen. It's the same thing. You know, you want me to support you, but you don't support me. You know, yeah. or you know, I, I have a business, but you don't support my business. But you go across town and you pay for you pay for something much more expensive when I'm cheaper. You see what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm much more qualified. I, I feel you. I understand that. I go through that yes, all the ma'am. time. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you so true. That is so true. Thank you, Evangelist. Anyone else? Good morning. My name is Pam. Pamela Richards. Good morning, Pam. Good morning. I thank Dr. Murphy for that beautiful, beautiful teaching. Um, actually, last night I was in prayer and praying basically um, just in general on a lot of topics. But one of the things was um, for the body of Christ to become unified. Yes, and I Lord. think in order for that to happen, we as Christians and believers, we have to go before God in this time, repenting and saying, Lord, I messed up. Yes. I messed up. Yes. I messed up. Yes. Re- 
Restore to me, Father. Restore yes, to me. You know, give me that fresh anointing, the fresh wisdom to go and do your will in excellence. But Father, yes. I messed up. Yeah. I cried and cried and cried because not only me, but the body of Christ has messed up. And we have to go before God and get our hands clean. Yes, Lord. Unity in this last season is so important, and we the only way we're going to come together is we all have to be uh, have a hum, humility, a spirit of humility. We all have to come as servants, being ready to serve those who are, are lost, those who have lost their way, and bring those sheep back mm. into the fold in the yes, body Lord. of Christ. Come and on. I just want to thank you, Dr. Murphy for uh, just confirming and, and, and allowing me to know that, you know, when I am before God and when God gives me something, it's not just for me, but it's for yes. us. It's Hallelujah. for the body of Christ. And I just want to say thank you guys. And I am so glad to be on this call. This is my first time on the call. And uh, I will continue to pray for you guys and ask you to continue to pray for me. Most definitely. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Praise God. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, I guess I think your silence is meaning no. Uh, is there any urgent prayer request that you would like the apostle to take before the throne of grace? Any urgent prayer request? Good morning. This is Kim in the Virgin Islands. Hi, honey. Morning. Um, I want you to continue to pray for my children and myself. After, after, um, Kim? Hello? I can't hear you, honey. I said I want you to continue to pray for me and my three sons. Yes. Continued prayer for Kim. Hello. And three sons. I need prayer. Yes. This is glory. Uh, uh, sister, she had a miscarriage. Pray for her. She's wearing the military? Oh, she had a miscarriage. Miscarriage, thank you. Okay. Okay. Who else? Who else? Anyone else? Dr. Murphy? Yes. Okay, so we're going to pray for Kim and her three sons in the Virgin Islands, and we're going to pray for Gloria, whose sister just had a miscarriage. Go ahead, Doc. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come here today and deliver what you've given me to deliver. I pray you've been glorified, Daddy. And so I pray for those, Father, who are going through different challenges in their lives, different crises. Father, I heard these two who are in desperate need for you to go where they are, Father. We thank you, Father, that you yourself bore those wounds. You you were healed. Uh, even now we are healed by those wounds, Father. And so I thank you that even now you're touching, you're reaching by your spirit. You said, Father, that we just cry out to you, said to call for your help and to heal us according to Psalms 30 and 2. You said, oh, Lord, my God, I call to you and you help me and you heal me. So I've been healing your way today. I've been healing and hope your way today for these two that are in desperate need. I pray, God, that in Jesus' name for that one that has lost the baby, God. I pray, God, that you would give her healing in her emotions. I pray, God, that you would teach her, Father, that everything that you do, you are purpose-driven. And so I pray that you would heal those disappointments. I pray that you would let her realize that you have not forgotten about her in your due season. You would give her the fruit of her womb according to your purpose and your time. I thank you that even now, God, that you're having the family wrap her arms around her and give her the strength that she needs and that she'll be reminded that she can get through this even now. I pray that over her, Father, that she'll be 
restored, that she'll be strengthened, Father, that you heal her emotions concerning this loss. I pray, I, I hear it, and I see, and I know in the spirit concerning parents who really, really are concerned about their children. And so, Father, I, my son, I stand the gap even now for this mother who is praying for her son, Father. I pray, God, that you would touch her son as I'm praying diligently for my boy. I pray, God, that you would touch her sons, that they'll realize the love and the prayers of their mother, that they'll honor their mother, and that they'll be blessed, Father. I pray, God, that they even now that you will go where they are and to touch their hearts and that you, Lord God, even send by a blood-bought soldier that would talk to them, that would minister to them, Father. Send that angel, Father God, that they would not even recognize and know that it is an angel, but they will know that you are speaking to their souls, God, that they will make it out in time, that they will be healed, that they will be delivered and set free. We thank you for it even now. I pray for the mother who's praying, God, for these babies. I pray that you will realize, as Job did, that he gave them back to the Lord and he prayed for them daily, realizing yes, that they belong to the Lord. And yes. that I pray, God, that she will realize that and that you will have peace in her spirit, that when she gives these babies back to you she knows that it is already all right and so we thank you that she will stand in the victory to know that you're God and everything that you do is good and everything that is for her even now concerning this journey is to remind her that she must be Lord this secret over everything and everybody. We give you praise what you're doing even now, Daddy. And we ask in no other name but Jesus that you give us revelation to know what to do and how to do what you're calling us to do each day and every breath we take. In yes. Jesus' name yes. we Lord. pray. And it is so. Thank you, Daddy. Yes, Lord. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this good morning with you, oh God. I thank each and every one of you for always joining me faithfully every Tuesday morning. I bless you, and I know because you trust in God that you are blessed and you are fortunate, hallelujah, and you are prosperous. I want to say that today we join hands together wherever you go, wherever you are. We join our spirits with each other, asking God to forgive us for everything we've done and may have said that would bring his name grief. His spirit grief, if we've done anything to any, anybody, anyone, anyone knowingly or unknowingly, we repent in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for not abandoning us when we make our mistakes or when we get hot to your pompous, oh God, Father. Father, we thank you, God, for reaching out to us and bringing us home into your glory. Father, we thank you for convicting us this morning, God, because we are convicted. Help us, God, to be convicted, Father, for any sin or anything we may have done or doing that will make you, O oh God, Father, shame, or bring shame to you, O oh God, Father. Thank you for the love thank, that you poured out upon us as your children. Help us to live out every single day, day by day, in your glory, in you. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Now, you said if we confess our sins one to another, that you're just and faithful to forgive us of all of them and to, and to purify us from all unrighteousness. That's your word, oh God. So, Father, we thank you right now for everything that you're pouring out in us and for everything that you're ripping out. Father, take your carving knife and carve out anything that's in us that's not like you, oh God. As you pour in us, your spirit, and embrace us with your presence. Father, we thank you. As we leave this place, but never your presence, we thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy that follow us everywhere we go, God. And we thank you, God, that your face will continuously shine down upon us. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Y'all, go in the love of God. Go in the peace of God. I love each and every one of you. See you again next Tuesday. We have a special guest, another series, another three-week series, guys, that's going to bless your thoughts off. So I see you again on Tuesday morning at 7. Be blessed, everyone. Dominate your day, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Hallelujah. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. God bless you. And glory. Goodbye, guys. Bye. I love y'all. Bye, Alicia. I love you, Kim. I love y'all. Bye. 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 God Amen. bless you, Glory. I love you, Sheba. I love y'all. Glory, I love y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pamela. I love you too.
God bless you guys. Have a great day. Bye, Malika. I love you. Miss Sheila, thanks for right. love you. Deloria, I love you. God bless you. I love you too. Evangelist Sherry West, love you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you, Akila, for joining us. We love you. I love you. God bless y'all. Have a great day, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye.